The original LEGO has virtually no zombie apocalypse themed minifigures. However, you can always assemble them yourself and now I will show you how to do it and at the end, I will give some useful tips for this. So watch this video to the end, well, with you as always Papa LEGO, let's go! The first way to collect original zombies is to look for parts from them on Bricklink or on sites that sell used items. They are really very original and interesting, but even I managed to find only two of these minifigures in all the time. This is hardly enough to assemble a whole army of the walking dead. Especially if you want to make not just a zombie, but a whole character with its own history. One of these heroes is a scientist who invented this terrible and deadly virus that turned the planet into a real hell on Earth. At first, he was engaged in the development of a new drug that allows a person to survive in the most extreme conditions. However, having begun testing on experimental monkeys, the mutagen began to change the test subject, turning him into an insane creature. The virus really made the host stronger and more resilient, but as soon as he died, the virus was tried by all means to preserve the viability of the organism. The result was the newly revived, walking dead. And 2. Feed yourself, zombies always need new and fresh flesh. Therefore, the first thing the infected monkey, having found a new life, attacked the poor scientist, thereby starting the irreversible and defining the point of no return. This is a great example of a zombie minifigure made from pieces from the likes of Pirates of the Caribbean, Lord of the Rings, or even Aquaman. Yes, parts from superheroes will also fit well into this theme. Borrowing the head from the Aquaman minifigure, I assembled a cop character who was bitten by a zombie while trying to arrest him. Arriving at a triggered alarm at the institute, the police squad met with the infected scientist. However, he no longer responded to the officer's signals. Then Officer Ryden, as a more experienced policeman, advanced to meet the scientist. But as soon as he took just a few steps towards the professor, he attacked the policeman and bit the poor fellow. Ryden's partner immediately opened fire to kill. However, realizing that there was nothing alive in the eyes of his friend, he realized that it was time to run. Having called for reinforcements, serious guys immediately arrived at the scene. This is a special police unit. However, will their skills help them against a hitherto unseen threat? Here I already used LEGO City Cop torsos with body armor prints. I took the weapons from clones from the Star Wars sets, slightly modifying them with a few details. You can see more detailed instructions for this weapon in one of my previous videos by clicking on the link in the tooltip. If you don't know what kind of headgear to choose for your special forces, then I would recommend using the standard blue caps, black berets from the Frenchman minifigure, or a blue helmet with an additional night vision device detail. Also, body armor from the old LEGO Secret Police series will look great. Build an assault rifle from a Star Wars long blaster and a black minifigure paintbrush for your The Special Forces minifig. Thus, you can assemble a military warrior or special squad fighter from the original LEGO. Now, with the support of a sniper on the roof, your heroes will have every chance to resist the crowd of the walking dead. Moreover, while help was on the way, the first zombies managed to infect many employees of the institute. Well, in the best traditions, our team of the special forces failed to cope with the crowd of the walking dead, and the virus spread throughout the world. Time passed, there were no scientists or policemen left, and the world was filled with bandits, marauders, and other survivors. One of these is our first post-apocalyptic hero, Jason Gonnery. Having lost his wife and child, left without his family, he tries his best to survive in this damn world. Firearms are now not uncommon, it is much more difficult to find cartridges for them. And in a world where loud sounds are the main enemy of man, Jason Jason decided to return to his childhood hobby. Taking a sports bow and a quiver of arrows, he plows from city to city in search of water and supplies. For close combat, he has a true friend, the big and sharp mister. Machete. In one of his sorties, he heard a quiet squeak among the old boxes. It was a small puppy that reminded him so much of his daughter's beloved dog. Now, this is a formidable German shepherd, accompanying our hero everywhere. Well, as a transport, it is best to use an ordinary racehorse horse. It is quiet, does not require refueling, and most importantly, does not break. Making his way through the abandoned logistics base, Jason noticed movement at one of the warehouses. Marauders. Not all survivors in this zombie apocalypse world remain friendly. Because of the print on the torso, you would think it's Harry Potter. But no, this is one of the bandits who, like all people, are just trying to survive in this world. However, this marauder has a gun with him. Jason does not really want to check if he is charged or if the marauder uses it to intimidate and rob just peoples. He is also armed with an iron crowbar that allows him to pick old door locks and use it as a melee weapon against a horde of crazed zombies. The marauder has an old bandage on his face. Someone might think that it's necessary to hide their face. However, in this world, people sprinkle a rag with perfume or alcohol and cover their mouths with it so as not to smell the terrible smell of carrion. Another bandit is also assembled from a torso from Harry Potter from the Serious Rescue set. He has a standard backpack behind his back and for the legs I chose a part from a policeman from Lego City. Of the weapons this character has a baseball bat, as in the most iconic zombie movies. 
He also has a pistol holster hanging from his belt but it's hard to tell if it's empty or not from afar. While his partner breaks into the hangar, he stands guard, looking to see if anyone has appeared on the horizon. It would be possible to take them down one by one with a bow shot, but it would hardly be possible to get closer than a hundred meters to them. No, it's better for our hero to stay at a safe distance. Who else is this? Another looter came around the corner. Apparently, this is their leader. Black, greasy hair, a thick leather jacket from Ninjaga sets, which helps against zombies, no worse than a police bulletproof vest. So far, not a single zombie has managed to bite through the sleeve of a biker jacket. And for intimidation, this marauder also painted a large skull with white paint. His weapons are a sharp machete and a long, heavy chain. I'm not sure if the chain is good in close combat, but rather it serves to intimidate. However, what interested them so much in this hangar? Of course, a large and, most likely, a full fuel truck. Now fuel for cars and motorcycles is worth its weight in gold. After all, if food can be grown in the garden, then you can't make good gasoline in the garden. Now it is clear why they came as a whole gang and are so armed. They will defend their prey to the last. This amount of gasoline can be exchanged for supplies that will last for a whole year of life. But most likely they use it to raid the peaceful settlements of the survivors. Leaving the bandits behind, Jason made his way deep into the base, hoping to find at least something not plundered in the food warehouse. Making his way among the empty shelves, he heard first a dull hit and then the cry of a young girl. Trying to find her favorite flakes, she climbed into a warehouse infested with the walking dead. And how did she manage to survive for such a long time? An old, shabby sweater stolen from Ron Weasley, a hat from a girl with a full from a recent minifigure series, a detailed backpack from a backpacker and a box of delicious cornflakes. She even has nothing to defend herself from dirty zombies, one of which jumped out from around the corner and was only a meter away from the poor girl. Jason had already raised his bow and drawn the string. However, at the same moment, the zombie's head shattered into several pieces from the hit of the meat cleaver. A young girl, wearing a dirty, pink blouse taken from the Hermione minifigure, hockey protection, and a Lego City police cap. Armed with a knife for cutting meat and a sharp icebreaker, she stood up for a little girl. Apparently, it was her sister. Now I understand how the youngest managed to survive for such a long time. However, Jason's actions did not go unnoticed. The eldest of the sisters saw the bow and, realizing that she could not oppose anything, she tensed. But at the same moment, Jason's faithful friend ran up to the young girl and joyfully jumped around her. Not an enemy, the elder sister decided for herself. Apparently now he has someone to take care of again, Jason thought. After all, the noise was clearly heard by the marauders and soon they will running here come for them and the dog really liked these girls. If you also decided to collect custom zombie apocalypse themed, then pay attention to the heads from series such as Pirates of the Caribbean, Lord of the Rings and Haydenside. Torsiki for survivors and marauders are best taken from Lego City as well as Harry Potter and Jurassic World. Modified blasters from Star Wars and guns from the Western series, cleavers and various knives from Lego City as well as backswords, fire axes and icebreakers will look great as weapons. In the next videos, I will show what other customizations can be made on this theme and I will also collect vehicles on the theme of the zombie apocalypse. Well, if you liked today's video and you want to see more of these custom, be sure to subscribe to the channel and watch other videos. Well, as always Papa Lego was with you. All you cool minifigures, and I don't say goodbye.